You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. NASCAR Diecast Collectors and Diecast Viewers on YouTube. This is Original Baby Right here. Welcome back to another NASCAR Diecast News episode on our YouTube channel. And today this is going to be the 203rd episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. And I know my upload schedule has been a little uh, funky lately, but uh, hope you guys are going to enjoy it because we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. This is like a mega jam packed episode of the NASCAR IKS news and we do got a bunch of 164 to be talking about and a lot of 124 so this is we actually got way more 124 to be talking about than the 164 so that's something new. Um, speaking of more diecasts, we do actually do got a couple more promo diecasts to show you guys, especially if you guys are big fans of Joey Gays and Todd Gilliland. However, though, one of them or maybe two of them, the results we weren't really looking for. But I'll get to more of that very shortly. We do got to talk about a lot of cool race win pre-orders that, that has happened the last few weeks. A lot of cool stuff. And, of course, with the pre-orders, we also do got some cancellations, three new cancellations to add to the list. And the best for last, guys, we got some, um, well, what were leaked photos, but now we actually got the official reveal for for NASCAR Authentics 2018 Wave 9. And we're going to talk about all this information and more as a NASCAR Diecast News starts right now. But before we do that, guys, let's go ahead and kick, kick right off to the slideshow, guys.
Alright everybody, welcome to the NASCAR iCast News, and let's get started with your newly released iCast from our good friends and Plan B Cells and Lionel Racing. And we're going to go right through in numerical order and starting off with the 164s, and the first one up, we got uh, Kevin Harvick's number 4, Bush Beer, Donald's a throwback. As you guys know, this is a throwback, another throwback to one of their uh, cans that they had back in the day, which I do not mind, but is it better than what we had from um, last year? Probably not, because last year was actually a throwback. Um, or even the, last, the year before that, but it looks like they're going back to the uh, looks like they're going back to what they did in 2015 for the uh, first ever um, you know, um, uh, Budweiser can. So uh, yeah, you know I'm not really a big fan of those. Uh, this one definitely looks very familiar. It, it literally it looks like the exact same paint scheme as last year, but just uh, they uh, it's not based off of, of, of a Kelly Arbor paint scheme, which is unfortunate. You know I kind of would love to see another Bush scheme uh, for Kevin Harvick or something a little more different because um you know i don't mind the company throwbacks but uh this one just really wasn't really my favorite but i'm sure any horror fans out there are still planning to get this because this car you know it's not a bad looking car but there, there probably are some way better other throwbacks that are out there next up we got the correct chase elliott napa car guys but uh for real yeah this car um does not have that god awful sparkle finish on the white and not on the blue. So this is, if you want an accurate Chase Elliott car, this is the one to get right here. This is Chase Elliott's number 9, 2018 Canned Am Dual Race win. So really nice. This is actually the second dual win that, uh, that Chase Elliott won. And also, <laughs> ironically, he won the second dual race as well. So pretty cool. But uh, for our first time ever, we actually got both dual cars, dual win cars produced in, in both scales. Because you guys know they made the Ryan Blaney dual win as well in the uh, 160, in the 164 scale as well. So uh, first time for um, Lionel Racing to do that for the 164s. So do appreciate that. This one day came off as a surprise. Plus we got like what, like three other Chase Elliott 164 race wins to uh, to be looking out out for as well. Because you know Chase Elliott, he's gonna sell. So of course this is gonna be a must get very soon because. Like I said, the original Napa car is a little outdated with the paint scheme, and also the sparkle finish is gone, my friend. So no more. We don't have to settle with that anymore. So if you want a car that is not as glittery uh, for all the wrong reasons, then this is the car to pick up. Next up, this car might look familiar because I did talk about this car, but it is Ryan Blaney's 2018 Duracell Menards Dawn. It's a throwback. Of course, this is a throwback to his father, Dave Blaney, when he drove... Uh, that he drove in the early 2000s in that number 77 uh, Jasper Transmissions Ford Taurus. Um, man, I really love this car. Um, I love the Menards yellow. I love how they got creative with that. So even a lot of people are like, oh, it's gotta be that regular yellow, but I really love this. Probably easy one of my favorite throwbacks for this year. And speaking of more favorite throwbacks, we gotta talk about this guy right here who is gonna get an upgrade for next year in the 95 car. Uh, for Levine Family Racing, we got Matt DiBenedetto's, or as I like to say, Mr. Dean Burrito himself. Um, yeah, Matt DiBenedetto, number 32, Keen Parts Corvette Parts. Dawn to throwback, uh, which is a throwback to Jeff Burden's 2000s, or yeah, his 2000 Excide uh, Ford Taurus, which, gotta admit, this car is freaking nice. I mean, I actually do have the die cast of this car as well, somewhere in my storage bins, but, um, Another cool. I mean, if, if you want to talk about the best throwback for for a underrated team, this is the one to get right here. You can also see that Jeff Burton's signature is also right below where the Corvette uh, uh, parts logo is, right below where, the, where it says Core. So that's a really nice looking touch. It looks like Jeff Burton does approve that. I'm sure he talked about that car a lot during the set of 500, <laughs> just to plant some biasism on there. But um, yeah, easily one of my favorite throwbacks to this year. If you could get the 124 of it, I recommend it as well. But you guys know me. I love the 124 Elites and the 164, so must get for sure. Hoping we can see this car in NASCAR Phoenix very soon. Next up, we got our first Michael McDowell car produced for this year, and it is his Loves Travel Stops uh, slash Speedco um, Ford Fusion. So really nice. I mean, uh, it's basically the same Loves car that we, you know, have got familiar with, but they added the Speedco logo to that, which, you know, definitely looks a little out of place, but a nice variety that we got. So... Plus, this is the one time to get a Michael McDowell car, so might as well get it. Um, even though it's probably going to be on the shelves for, you know, for, for who knows how long. <laughs> Next up, we got uh, Bob Wallace's number 43 Worldwide Technology Car. A very unique paint scheme that I love that they... That, another Rich Petty car that has blue and red on it, which I really do like. Um, I believe he just recently ran this car. Um, you know, you know, uh, very recently, I can't remember what race, but... Um, um, 
a really nice looking car regardless. I mean, we've had a lot of cool Bubba Wallace cars for this year. And this one, you know, it's a lot more different. Uh, and I'm I, I mean, I want to say it's a simple paint scheme, but you, know, you can definitely see there are, there's something interesting going on. Plus, I like the light blue and the, uh, the red and, um, and the dark blue to it. Just uh, overall, not a bad looking car. And the last car I'm going to be talking about, which I'm very surprised this car got made, it's my boy, Mark Drex Jr., number uh, 78, Auto Owners Insurance. This car will be known as the Big A car because you can see right there, it is exactly like the Auto Owners car, but except it has a big old freaking A on there, which I do find it cool. I mean, I got to give a good shout out to my good friend, um, Derek Lewis, also known as uh, Akinasi Fan 142. Um, he actually saw this car when he met Mark Drex Jr. Um, coming toward, what, like early this year or end of last year. And he was the probably one of the first people to see this car, and he that, that, that lot of people were wondering, oh, is that going to be what the auto owners cars could be? Um, well, it turns out that's not the case. But eventually, they did change the paint scheme out. Uh, well, not really paint scheme, but they uh, we've had a lot of cool variety for the auto owners cars. I mean, we start off with the original auto owners car, which he ran early this year, and then he went to this big A car, and then he did the Sherry Strong um, auto owners car from uh, the Roll Pool race, which you know I really love that car. It's on DMP alert, by the way, so pre-order the hell out of that car because it's probably one of the best uh, cars that we got that does not have an emoji on it, so really nice. Uh, but that wraps up on the 164 Sports, guys. Like I said, pretty short right there, but now it's time to get on to uh, the extended ones, which are the 124 exclusives. I'm going to be pretty brief and short to some of these cars because there was a lot to talk about, and I'm going to try to get this done as uh, hopefully in half an hour, but you guys know me. I, I, I talk about diecast for nearly an hour, so this should be interesting. But a lot of cool race wins we talk about for the 124 exclusives, and these cars are only available on the 124 scale. Um, you can't get them in any other scale, as far as I know. Um, so first one up, we got Brackets. I'll see number two, Miller Lights Daytona Clash um, race win, uh, or whatever Fox Sports calls it, the, what the Advanced Auto Parts Clash. I mean, there's so many names that they have changed. I mean, I remember what it used to be called, you know, the uh, the, what, the Budweiser Shootout or the uh, Sprint Unlimited, and now it's called the uh, Advanced Auto Parts Clash. So, I mean, heck, I mean, I'm glad they went back to the Clash. I mean, definitely uh, bringing back some good vibes from the early days in NASCAR. But, um, yeah, really nice looking race win that we got, even though it's not technically an actual race win because this race doesn't really count in points. It just got him up higher in the grid for the Daytona 500. But um, still pretty nice. I mean, it's definitely something I think any Kizowski fan would love. Um, I think this car was offered at both scales, but it was canceled. But um, yeah, I, I would recommend getting this car. Plus, you know, it's always cool seeing Brad as I was getting victory lane. Um, not really much of a race diversion, though, as you can see, but um, definitely something I would add for any Kozowski fans out there. Um, by the way, shout out to my good friend uh, Dylan if you're watching this video. Um, that uh, diecast will be dedicated to you, bud. Next up, we got Kevin Harvick's number four, Jimmy John's Las Vegas race win, which, you know, I really do like this car because of all the. Uh, I love the confetti on this car, man. Really cool because you guys know the race was sponsored by Pennzoil. So we got like a yellow and, uh, what is it, like yellow, gray, and I think it looks like yellow and gray. I was going to say black, but um, I really do like this. I mean, um, man, it, it, this is a really nice looking race one. Like I said, the confetti really pop, makes this car pop like crazy. Plus, I believe that this car also comes with a uh, official uh, sticker for uh, Kevin Harvick. Um, what he, for getting like a hundred wins in total or something like that um, all together in the Xfinity uh, combined the Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and the uh, Truck Series. So uh, pretty big milestone for Kevin Harvick. So if you guys do want to get um, the hundredth win that Kevin Harvick uh, won in, then this is the car to get right here, guys. Really nice. Next up, we got Justin Allgaier's number seven Branch Agriculture, which is a 124 exclusive right now. But hang on to this car because we will be talking about it maybe in Wave 9, guys. Um, all right, got to stop giving hints. Otherwise, I'm going to soil it like Lionel Racing does with the, um, the waves in their Lionel Garage. I, and you can tell I, I'm still but I'm still kind of hurt over that. But glad, hopefully, the third lesson. But anyway, it's getting so topic. We got the brand agriculture car. Holy crap. They took such a great paint scheme that we had from last year. And they just, oh. What on earth happened to this car? No wonder this car got canceled in any 164 scale. I, you know, I wouldn't mind this car, but just, I don't know. It, I, I, the, the yellow number, the black stripe that's right by it. I mean, the only part I like about this car is the orange. But Xfinity cars don't really sell too well because you can see right there. I mean, it's literally what you're only paying like 40 or 45 bucks for this. I mean, it's not the best quality, mostly plastic, but um. 
yeah, I mean, I probably would recommend this, but Algar cars, and this is probably the one to get right here because we usually get a lot of Algar cars that get canceled, especially since this is one of your championship contenders right now. Well, right now he's what, like outside of the uh, championship four? The playoffs, man, they are such a great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm the big Jesus. Um, next up, we also got uh, Tyler Reddick's number uh, nine Burger Fi Daytona race win. So this one's actually, I really do like a lot more better than his uh, original Burger Fi car. This car actually has uh, damage on, uh, well, not, not mobile out damage, but it actually has a lot more damage on the uh, passenger side, which is like caved in, so that's really nice. But you can't really see too much on this picture, but um, um, the Daytona wins for, for the Cup Series and Xfinity Series have not been disappointing. There's usually like a big wreck that happens, and these cars usually get, usually get torn up. I mean, heck, uh, the Ryan Reed car that we had from last year for NASCAR Authentics, that uh, was pretty torn up like crazy. The Chase Elliott car from, uh, what, like 2015, I believe, or 2016, um, one of those two years, uh, what, like the uh, corner panel on the uh, right, on the right passenger side got uh, caved in, so we've had a lot of cool race wins for the Xfinity series, and uh, I honestly wouldn't be surprised that this car will be in NASCAR Authentics, because we've had the last two Daytona winners for the Xfinity series in NASCAR Authentics, so... No Lionel, they would probably get this in. I mean, I'm hoping because now we're going to get, you know, Arca, well, maybe Arca or Campbell Trucks next. I mean, so this would be a great addition because we've had a lot of, we've had all the other drivers from Junior Motorsports come aboard for NASCAR Phoenix, and this one would be a great addition for Tyler Reddick, but we'll keep an eye on that maybe for the next few waves. But yeah, solid car. Definitely would recommend getting this uh, for you guys' collection. Next up, we, yeah, it's, let's see right here. Um, Yipper, we got the uh, Clint Boyer number 14 Ford Hall of Fans. And yes, this is the 124 exclusive. It was canceled in the 164 scale. And, um, you know, I generally do like this paint scheme, but this has come from a guy who really does not like Ford. But uh, some people say, oh, you don't like Ford, but you like Ryan Blaney and Carl Edwards. Well, I don't go for manufacturers, guys, all right? I may be a car guy, and I may be, you know, that's what my occupation is as well outside of YouTube. Um, being an uh, automotive technician, but, uh, well, you guys know what I'm doing now, so, <laughs> die-cast money it is, but, um, yeah, it's getting so on topic, guys, uh, I mean, heck, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the Ford Hall of Fans car, um, what, I believe he drove this car, I mean, uh, man, I should have my research before I did this video, because some people would be like, he didn't run this car at that race, you, 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 you dingbat, <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna say he ran this car at Richmond, but I highly doubt that, but, um, yeah, really nice looking car that we got. I mean, unfortunately, it got canceled. Um, but um, who knows? Maybe we can get it for NASCAR Thanks. I highly doubt it, but we'll see. I mean, I used to say that with every car. Like, oh, it's going to be a NASCAR FedEx. But, you know, I don't work for Lionel. But I do like this car. It is very simple. And it's uh, it literally almost looks like a Hall of Fame car if you guys look at it from a distance. So, I mean, heck. I mean, I thought Ford was going to fool us with this one. But clearly not. But still a nice looking uh, car regardless of what you guys think. But uh, we also do got some. Uh, we got also got another Daytona race win, which is the uh, the the truck race win uh, for Daytona, which is driven by Johnny Sauter, guys. So this is the second time we got Johnny Sauter car produced uh, uh, for for the uh, 124s. As you guys know, they made his championship car from two years ago. But this one probably a lot more better because it is an accurate car. It doesn't have that god awful championship logo. So. Really do not, really do like this. I'm sorry, I almost do not like this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a big, big fan of the, of the driver, but um, um, this car is kind of outdated now because they did end up changing the 21 uh, in the twos font. So it looks like GMS is doing some big rave branding. Speaking of which, Spencer Gallagher, if you guys haven't heard already, uh, is officially retiring. Or I don't want to say that word because he's still pretty young. He's stepping out of racing, kind of like what Carl Edwards and uh, Casey Kane are doing. But I um, thought I'd just point it out there because you know a lot, uh, Elijah. That's you know. That's <laughs> that's his big sponsor. <laughs> uh, but again, curious to know know what you guys think. Who's going to drive the twenty three uh, car for the Xfinity series for next year? Um, I don't know. Probably going to be a Hendrick driver. A lot of people are like, oh, it's going to be Casey Kane, but he's not racing an car. But back to the Johnny Sauter truck. Uh, we'll recommend, recommend getting this if you guys like collected the truck diecast. Um, that's for certain. Next up, we got the uh, we're going to go all the way to uh, the Kurt Busch number forty one Haas Animation Monster Energy car. So you guys know this car usually is a one twenty four exclusive every year because of the Monster Energy logos. And yes, this car is mounted on a base, but it's actually on that plastic uh, base that plastic black base that a lot of people do like um so it actually does look nice for a collector's item and 
and heck i mean it actually looks really cool i'm glad they did not put the clear base on this car for once so um really nice i do like this but uh hopefully it won't have the triangular screws because that's when you can tell that they do not want you to take this car off the base but uh whether or doubt or not you can still find a way to break this base off but since it is on this regular uh the regular arc base then i say it does look pretty nice on that and we also got uh, the number 42 cars, guys. We got a lot of cool 42 cars to be talking about for um, the Xfinity series. Um, let's see right here. We got uh, Kyle Larson, number 42, DC Solar, Las Vegas Xfinity race win. And um, yeah, this is that. I find it ironic that uh, both DC Solar cars won the Las Vegas race. The Las Vegas races. So we're gonna get a, uh, another one of these very soon with Ross Chastain. But if you guys are looking for that Ross Chastain car, this could be a good substitute for now. Well, this car is actually really nice. There was a lot of uh, rubber buildup and and um, and uh, all sorts of debris on this car. Since it is a white car, it's showing up very nicely. If you guys saw some of the uh, pictures of that Lionel posted, uh, I posted them on. Um, there's all, they're, all, they're also on a diecast fan as well. So um, give them a follow if you guys haven't already. Um, so yeah, really nice looking car. We recommend getting this. I mean, I know I kind of just contradict myself saying, "Oh, don't get the Xfinity race wins or any of the Xfinity cars." This one does look really nice. And the next driver to be talking about is a guy who just recently won uh, his first ever race in the um, in the uh, Xfinity series. Ironically, at Kansas, just like his father uh, a couple years ago, we got John Hunter Nemechek in the number 42 Fire Alarm Services card. This is yet another card that was canceled in the 164 scale, but they did end up making it in the 124 scale, which you know does kind of suck. But man, this car actually does look really nice. I'm glad the Fire Alarm Services car is back in the Xfinity series. I mean, we haven't seen it since uh, with Regan Smith for Junior Motorsports, but um, Fire Alarm looks like they are loving uh, the 40, uh, they're loving Ganassi a lot. Well, mostly because they uh, carried over from uh, John Hunter Nemechek from the uh, truck series to here on. But I don't know, man. I mean, we're, 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 it's getting really hard to figure out who's going to drive that 42 car for next year. I mean, I know Larson still is going to, but between Ross Chastain and John Hunter Nemechek, who do you guys think is going to drive the 42 car for next year? My money's probably on Ross Chastain, but I wouldn't be surprised if John Hernemichek can get um, get get a ride with Ganassi. Because remember, Ganassi used to have two cars um, when Brendan Poole's around, so the possibilities are endless, my friends. But this is a nice looking car. I like the paint scheme. It's unfortunate they got canceled in the 1C4 scale, but really nice regardless. Next up, we got a Bubble Walls car to be talking about. It is his number 43 Foo Lion car. We have not really seen a Foo Lion car produced yet, ever, so this is the first. Um, it's basically the same, um, well, I don't want to say generic, but it's the same uh, paint scheme play out that Richard Petty usually does for all of his paint schemes. But um, something a little more different, especially if you guys are a big supporter of Blue Lion, then this is going to be looking really nice. Um, hopefully we can get this car um, in the 164 again for next year, but probably will be canceled. But um, pretty nice. The Petty Blue on this does look uh, fairly nice as well. Um, I'm um, I'm not quite sure when he drove this car. I mean, uh, I was gonna say at Bristol, but that's the Food City and not Food Lion 500, so <laughs> or whatever the hell it's called now. I mean, NASCAR changes their sponsors at the races like it's crazy. So heck. <laughs> and the last two cars we talk about this one, I'm sure it's gonna be a favorite because you guys know that um, this guy is officially done with NASCAR because he's not returning to NASCAR even with his health conditions. We gotta talk about Casey Kane, guys. We got the um, exclusive 124 for him in the uh, number 95 Dumont Jets. Um, and no, this is not a throwback, but this is a retro uh, paint scheme that he ran at the All Star Race only in tribute to um, his All Star win back in 2008, from what I believe. As you guys see right there, they nailed this paint scheme perfect, even down right to uh, they had the Abraham 9 on this car, which is awesome. I didn't think they were gonna get the rights to that, but they did. So great effort man i mean it's unfortunate this was not his throwback but we did got another cool throwback uh from 2006 as his throwback for the donaldson race but man it's a shame this car was not ever offered in the wc sports scale or maybe it will who knows hmm maybe we'll have to tune in for nascar Thenix, guys maybe there's gonna be something good about this car so keep an eye on this car and the just Nagar car because who knows maybe these cars might not be 124 exclusives after all plot twist and the last car to be talked about on the 124 exclusives, we got, um, we got, you know, a cup leecher. I mean, surprise that this car got made, because nobody likes cup leechers. Um, surprise I didn't say that with Kyle Larson, but people like Larson more than Harvick. <laughs> we got Kevin Harvick's number 98, Hunt Brothers Pizza Atlanta race win. So, um, not as exciting as this Atlanta car for, that he won in the, um, 
Well, he swept both weekends as well. I mean, he swept both races at the Aliena weekend, so I guess that's cool if you guys want it. If you guys like collecting the sweet cars, then this is probably a great car to go along with the Kevin Harvick Atlanta race win. But, um, you know, other than that, guys, that has officially wrapped up all of the 164s and the 124s for this episode. Alrighty, guys, now it's time to talk about your pre-orders, guys. And uh, let's go ahead and get the, get to things really quickly. So, uh... Let's go ahead and start off with the pre-orders, guys. So first one up, we got Haley Dingens, number 19, Mobile One, Napro Power Premium, uh, Meridian k and Pro Ra West Race Win. And this car, surprisingly, was going to be offered. I mean, of course, there was a lot of media talking about, you know, Haley Dingen becoming the first ever female uh, driver in NASCAR to win in the k and Pro West Series. So, really cool. I mean, you can tell it was a really exciting win for, not only for Haley, but also for the Deegan family as well. So, really nice and this car actually is available in the 124 arc but if you guys notice that this car is priced at nearly uh what like almost 70 dollars so i'll be wondering i thought this was an arc why is it that much it's because it's going to be on the 2013 toyota cup body which will have uh the hood open and the trunk open as well so it will be that's the reason why it's priced like that guys because uh, the k and Pro West, Pro, Pro, Pro West, I can't talk right now, a lot of cars to be talking about. The k and Pro West series, uh, their cars are based off the um, the first time that NASCAR ran the Gen 6, so that's the reason why that they're going to make on that car, which is pretty cool. I mean, it, uh, it's definitely going to be worth the 70 bucks, so I recommend getting this, but uh, as for 164 collectors, we're out of luck because this car has not been offered that, but... I wouldn't be surprised and uh, if we get it eventually, but that's really cool. Uh, we got some Xfinity cards to be talking about as well. We got one that uh, just recently just came up and kind of took forever to get on the pre-order list, but we finally got it. Um, unfortunately, this guy has already been eliminated uh, from the Xfinity Championship playoffs. We got Ross Chastain in number 42 DC Solar Las Vegas Xfinity race win. So kind of right that I just talked about the other DC Solar Las Vegas win from Kyle Larson, so pretty appropriate to have this car as well, but it is available for pre-order guys as well. Um, of course, this is going to be a, a, a diecast to get if you guys are big fans of, or if you guys just started becoming fans of Ross Chastain because he's in a good ride now. I mean, definitely a favorite win, and speaking of another favorite win, we got to talk about the race that happened at the Charlotte World War Race. I know that seems kind of old, but this car is now available for pre-order. We got not the 60 car but we get the number 98 car that has the the that uh that you know unlucky ford uh paint scheme that the 60 car has crashed a lot in we got chase briscoe in the number uh 60 well i almost said 60 wow this is the 98 car man what am i talking about the 60 car has not even won a damn race it's mostly crashed <laughs> um but man i just completely just messed this whole thing up but yeah the charlotte rover race win for the Xfinity series is offered and that's really cool uh, this is another favorite win for chase briscoe i mean uh, definitely this is probably the race right here that's going to determine if he's going to drive the 98 car full-time next year which i hope because you guys know kevin harvick is no longer racing full-time in the Xfinity series thank god that's another drive we don't have to worry about stealing wins away so i can imagine who's next probably kyle bush or kyle larson <laughs> for everyone to hate on in the Xfinity series but um, now let's talk about some of the race wins that we got. And we actually got all three car, uh, well, all three drivers to be talking about. Well, two drivers exactly uh, for this um, round of 12. So uh, we got Chase Elliott's number nine Napa Dover race win. And um, I did not tune, I actually uh, did not watch this race live because I was at a, my first ever, uh, I was at the Super uh, Dirt Week race that was in Oswego Speedway. Um, which is like north of Syracuse. So, um, yeah, that was actually really cool. I actually, actually saw Stuart Friesen, and he was running pretty well. So that's the reason why I skipped out on this race. But I'm telling you guys, I've never been to a dirt race before. Go to one, and th this one was really cool. I'm planning to probably go to one every year. Um, but as for this race right here, man, I mean, definitely a favorite win. Uh, it was an exciting finish. Heard it was a crazy finish as well because Chase Elliott wasn't planning on to win this race. Um, but somehow he pulled off the strategy and got his second win in the Cup Series. So really nice. But surprisingly, this car is not offering at both scales, which is ironic because you would think, um, you know, Chase Elliott will always have most of his race wins produced in both scales because, you know, 
everyone loves Jay Selly, and he he he, he, he definitely uh, uh, helps out with the merchandising sales. That's for certain. Uh, next up, we also got Eric Amaral's number 10, Smithfield of Bacon. I mean, who doesn't love bacon, am I right? Um, but, um, yeah, whoever's that lucky guy or girl that won that whole lifetime supply of bacon from Smithfield, you are one lucky sucker because that's a really nice looking car. And what a great way to uh, finally get some redemption after what happened at the day at the AT Tona 500. I still can't believe that happened. I, I mean, heck, I mean, you know, it's happened, but, you know, all good things definitely come to um, to a closure, that's for certain. I mean, Eric Amaral is still moving on, and he's moving on to the next round. Meanwhile, Austin Dillon is still struggling and got eliminated in the first round. So, I don't you just love karma? <laughs> and just all the and all the most recent reasons. But um, I know that this finish was also controversial as well because they did not uh, cause a they did not call out a yellow um, for this race, and we were able to. Uh, See, I'm rolling win when he, even though this race was probably the worst Talladega race that I have seen, um, it was really boring. Nothing happened unless the last few laps, just nothing. So, but nice to see Eric Amarola finally win a race, but this just felt like this was going to be just a stored Haas race, that's for certain. And the last car to be talking about for the pre-order race wins, we got to talk about Chase Elliott, guys. He freaking won again! He won. I mean, this guy is now in contention of becoming a round of four driver. I mean, insane. I mean, heck. Once again, Kevin Harvick chokes again at um, at Kansas, which is ironic because he did won at this Kansas race, uh, what, like early this year. And freaking Chase Elliott, man. He won, especially in the popular Mountain Dew car. So this car is going to look really nice, especially with the playoff green uh, to go along with the uh, Mountain Dew green that we got. So really nice and a little update also on the mountain dew car as well guys you guys probably wonder why the 2019 mountain dew car has been pulled or the picture has been pulled for every single diecast dealer well it turns out i think they are going to change the paint scheme so um yeah so i'll give you guys a brief update on that once uh, we get that in but um yeah so don't worry they got canceled guys i don't think a chase out car will ever get canceled well um i might be wrong on that because the next topic we got to talk about is we got to talk about some cancellations, guys. And this was so non-intentional, but the first car up for the cancellation list is the Chase Elliott car. So, wow, I'm just on a roll today, guys. So, on the cancellation list, we got the 2018 Chase Elliott number 23 GM Fabrication Throwback was canceled the 164 ARC, which is very unfortunate because I thought this car was going to make it on the pre-order list because, you know, this is such a very popular paint scheme if you guys are. I mean, it's so popular, I don't even have to, you know, tell you guys what this paint scheme is based off on. If you're a NASCAR fan, you know what this car is based off on. I'll give you a hint, it's Miller, It's a Miller car. <laughs> but, um, my God, really nice looking car. Um, but it looks like that, um, and plus also on the car, you can clearly see what it says on the quarter panel. Um, if you're an Allison fan, <laughs> just uh, just gotta give you guys uh, that, that little um, uh, intel on that for any new NASCAR fans out there. But yeah, very unfortunate that this car got canceled. But it will be offered. It is gonna be made in the 124 scale. Next up, we got uh, William Byron's in the number 24 Henrik Autoguard, and this car was canceled in every single scale. And a lot of people are wondering, well, this car was underrated. But I think the main reason why this car was canceled is because of that damn Twitter logo, man. No one likes the emojis. I know a lot of people are over the emojis, but you can clearly see this is going to hurt the diecast sales. And is it just me, or is that 24? Uh, if you guys look on the bottom, on the top view of this car, if you look on the sides, it has uh, white numbers. So, yeah, the render really screwed up on this. Maybe a lot of people saw that. I mean, because, you know, people like to see details. I mean, just like me. I mean, I look at details on diecast very... Um, I mean, I scrutinize my diecast, so... Um, that came out really wrong, but um, what we're we talking about? Oh yeah, the uh, Auto Guard car. I'm getting that. This is gonna be a lengthy episode, guys. But I'm just getting so sidetracked. But um, heck, that's what uh, caffeine does to the brain because I just chugged a whole uh, uh, Coca Cola, a uh, cherry Coke. I, well, I don't even know how to pronounce that now. <laughs> but yeah, this car was canceled in every single scale. Pretty unfortunate. Um, it is a underrated paint scheme, but you know, would look nice without that Twitter logo. And the last car to be talked about for the cancellation, this one is a big surprise because I thought people are going to love this because if you're a Rich Bainey fan, you would think this car would be made. But um, it's a Bubba Wallace number 43 STP throwback, which is a Darlington raced version. So 
this has been canceled in 164 ARC, which is shocking because, man, I mean, people, I mean, there, there are some things that people love. They love cool paint schemes, cool looking throwback paint schemes, and then the race versions. And I thought this car was going to make it because we did have another Bubble Wallace uh, race version that came out. Well, actually, we had two Bubble Wallace race, ver race versions that were made in 164 scale. We got the Daytona 500 race version, which is coming out very, very soon. And that car looks freaking awesome. It is tore up like crazy. I might just have to get that car and do a comparison for you guys because I do have the regular click and close car. But we also had the Pocono first start race version that happened last year as well. So this one was surprising because we've had a lot of race versions for Bubble Wallace that got made in the 1C4 scale. But this one didn't, guys. Maybe because the throwback changed at the last minute and people weren't really satisfied with it because we've had this throwback in 2015. So that's probably my only assumption. But uh, or people just realized, oh, they made another one. I thought they already did. Because you guys know they're making two different versions of this car um, before and after the reveal when they change the paint scheme. But um, yeah, that's pretty unfortunate, guys. But that wraps up on your pre-orders and cancellations. And now it's time to get on to the promo diecast. So we do got some new promos to be talked about. And the first one up, we got Todd Gillen's number four Mobile One Truck Toyota Tundra, which is uh, priced at 50 bucks uh, with probably shipping and taxes. But you also have an option to get this car autographed. But yeah, this car is available. Um, the only thing that is inaccurate about this car, it does not have the Snoko Rookie of the Year um, contingencies on this car or no rookie stripes. So accuracy definitely kind of falls apart on this one. That is for certain. But um, kind of same thing with the Harrison Burden car as well. Well, truck as well. There I go again. <laughs> but um, and those little green tabs I see, that's just a custom that, uh, that, that those are just, that, that those are just, uh, I think, uh, custom tape marks that someone did on this car. Well, truck. God, Brian, it's a truck. How many times do I gotta tell you this? What are you, stupid? <laughs> But, um, I mean, of course, you guys know the truck diecast don't have any opening functions or posable wheels, but still a nice looking truck that we got. And I re would recommend getting it. If you guys already got the Noah Gregson truck, I almost said it, guys. I mean, repeat after me. Truck, truck, truck. Keep on trucking. Oh, God, I don't want to be in that cringy video like Lionel Racing did. If you guys haven't seen it already, I highly encourage you guys to not watch the uh, episode of The Fix where they did the truck reveal because it was pretty cringy, especially if you guys are Tim McGraw fans. This one will probably hurt your ears, but I've um, had a poke fun Lionel for that because you guys know they like to do cringy stuff on their Fix episodes, which I find hilarious. But um, yeah, really nice looking truck that we got. And the next cars I got to show you guys are some Joey Gaze promos. We got the Spark Energy Chevrolet Camaro and the, uh, this is a sponsor I've never seen before. The, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. The um, Absarkaratuff.com car? I have no idea what the hell that says. Uh, Absorka. Absorka. Okay. Um, so that one's actually was surprising, but you could these are exclusives that you can only get at Joey Gase's website. I'll probably provide the description if you guys want to check it out. But there is, uh, I mean, I was planning on getting these cars, but um, because I was excited to finally get a Joey Gase car because, you know, we haven't really seen that much lately. I mean, what we had, uh, that one promo that came out a few years ago, but it wouldn't ship in my area. But luckily, the, the shipping is a lot less stricter and you, they could basically ship it to anywhere now. So I was planning on getting this. But I found a picture, actually some people provided me a photograph, um, well, two shout outs I gotta give out to, to this photograph, um, that I'm about to show you, uh, Federated Auto Parts, uh, on, uh, on, uh, Instagram, I believe, or, um, heck, I'm trying to look up the name real quick, um, uh, well, thank you to, yeah, the Federated Auto Parts Cup Series on Instagram, he was actually, uh, the first one to post a picture of what the die cast looks like, and here's a picture of the car out of, well, in the box. And if you guys can see, it doesn't look too bad. They actually, uh, Joey Gase uh, actually autographed the car, so it does look nice. But the next part I'm about to show you is probably going to be the worst die cast that we got for this year. Well, I warned you guys. So here it is. So at first glance, you can't really tell that there's nothing wrong with this car. But if you look closely, some people are going to be like, oh, God, the PTC mold's back? Yes, it is, guys. Unfortunately, the PTC mold is back. But don't worry, guys. It gets even worse. If you guys look, that this car is... At, you know how I said this is an Xfinity car? This is on a Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 Cup body. What? What the hell? What? <laughs> and even worse, you're paying $9.99 for this car. It looks like a freaking custom gone wrong. It's so... Bad. Oh my god, like, 
the decals are, are so just, the quality looks like crap, the tires look like crap, and it's on the wrong body, like, god, I mean, the, don't even get me started on how horrendous these decals look, I mean, oh my god. I also gotta give a shout out to another one of my good friends, um, Ian Nation of 48. He did a video on this uh, as well with his reaction, so a little shout out to him. Plus, he provided me the information on this car as well. But uh, probably if you guys want to check out more reactions, then uh, go to his channel because he's known as you know the original race reactor, so really cool. Um, yeah, good friend of uh, Ian Perez. We should probably get him on here on the next few episodes of the Diecast News. Um, heck. Right, let's get that going guys but yeah i at, i mean at, at first i was if this picture didn't come out sooner i would have said okay yeah you know get this car but thank god this picture came out uh by the time i uh did this uh, diecast news this car's horrendous and i can only imagine that the other car that um the the, the, the one that starts with the a i think it's going to be in the same picture so i i usually encourage you guys to buy promos but i would save your money and avoid buying these cars they are not worth it the quality is crap and overall it's just a crappy diecast guys i mean unless you're a big joey gase man you're probably going to have better luck with a high quality custom maker out there so after all this car could be good for a custom maker, but it's just, oh my god, I mean, just when you thought Lionel was actually doing good for once, they go back to their old roots and they do pull this crap out of their, you know what, so, pretty unfortunate right there, but, um, pretty kind of a buzzkill moment, if you say so myself, but, um, now it's time to get on to the best for last, guys, and this is the moment you guys been waiting for. We gotta talk about some NASCAR Authentics news for 2018. This is Wave 9, my friends. They have had a official reveal from the latest episode of The Fix, but there were some leaked uh, pictures of these Wave as well, which I'm going to show you right here. A quick shout-out to um, um, another one of my good friends, uh, Wimmer33 fan, and also another Instagrammer as well, which don't know if he wants to remain anonymous or not, but I guess I'll give him the credit as well. Um, Let's see right here, um, the, as I'm trying to find um, the random Instagrammer. Um, yeah, it was uh, Burris Nathan. Uh, they both of these guys were able to find uh, surprisingly Wave Nine, and they actually found this wave right before, uh, well, like two weeks in advance before Lionel um, Lionel the Fix actually announced this. So really nice. But um, let's go ahead and see what's in store for Wave Nine, as you guys see right there. Uh, that was the leaked photo, but let's look at the official uh, photo. Um, for the, well, first of all, we don't have an NHRA car, and you guys are probably wonder, well, what on earth is replacing the NHRA car? Well, NASCAR Classics is making a return, well, first time for Lionel Racing, but you guys remember, uh, Spin Master used to have some classic cars as well, um, they did with, uh, Richard Childress and Dale Earnhardt, so, um, so glad to see that this is back, so the first Classics car that, the first NASCAR Classics car that we got with a special box as well, we got Jeff Gordon's number 1998 Number 24, DuPont Darlington Southern 500 race win. What a nice, nice looking car. And plus, it also comes with a card as well. But man, I really love the packaging on this car. Um, really nice. A lot of people are going to get a lot of throwbacks to this car. Um, as you guys can see right there, that this car looks really nice. I'm definitely going to pick this up. It's prob This one's probably going to sell pretty quick because Jeff Gordon diecast. I mean, heck, if you guys haven't got a Jeff Gordon car in your collection yet, this is the one to get right here. So great addition really makes up with the um with no nhra car that we got in this wave which i'm fortunate because i do like the nhra cars and um speaking of that guys i'm planning to do a full review on all the nhra cars that were released for um for um for the past few waves so if you guys are interested in that feel free to comment below but now let's get on to what's in uh wave nine for the rest of the cars so going down the list we got austin dillon's number three dow daytona race win and you know, this one I was, I was surprised to see what it comes with. Actually, it's going to be, uh, I think this is going to be standard for most of the race wins that we got for this year, which is unfortunate because I do like the collector card, but it looks like they are going with a magnet, guys, the uh, race winner sticker magnet, which is cool, but, you know, it's Daytona 500, man. I mean, they could have something a little bit better, or they could put, like, a Daytona 500 emblem uh, as a magnet or something like that. So, I mean, the race winner sticker definitely is... Um, you know, I, I'll probably let it slide for this time, but I think that's what we're going to get for most of the race wins just by looking at that because we did got this with the March Rex Jr. Homestead win as well. So, but pretty nice. I'm sure a lot of people are going to like this car. Plus, it is an accurate car. It has the correct fate on this. So, really nice. Um, notice how I said to keep your eyes on the Justin Algar car. And 
Looks like we got our first exclusive for this wave. We got the uh, Justin Allgaier Ranch Agriculture car. So, yes, this car is a NASCAR Thanks exclusive for the 164 scale. So, really nice. Um, probably still going to review this car because it is, it is an exclusive car. And I do have last year's car to compare it with. So, but, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a downgrade compared to last year's for the paint scheme. But still nice. It is an exclusive. Next up, we got Chase Elliott's number nine Napa Patriotic car. So, I mean, uh, it was only a matter of time we were going to get another uh, Chase Elliott car in the wave. Napa Patriotic car, I mean, um, I think we never had the uh, Patriotic car released for uh, for uh, Chase Elliott yet. So, that's a first, if I'm uh, not mistaken. I feel like we did with, um, with a few years ago, but... I think this is the first as far as I know, but pretty nice. Uh, the next one I'm actually looking, really looking forward to, we got Ricky Stouse Jr.'s number 17 Little Hug car. Um, this one I'm really liking. I mean, I'm loving the variety that they got. I mean, Stenhouse has had a lot of cool paint teams lately, but this one, when they revealed it last year, I'm like, oh man, it'd be cool if they got this car in uh, NASCAR Authentics, which is cool because usually you do see the little hugs at Walmart, so pretty appropriate to have this car in there. And we got another Snickers car as well that's going to be made. We got the Snickers Almond, or Almond, whatever you guys say. Um, let's put, do a comment more. How do you guys say Almond? Do you say Almond or Almond? <laughs> but um, you guys, I'll see. We got so got the return of the Pit Magnets. This is the only one that comes with the Pit Magnets, which is really nice. And we haven't had that, we haven't had that uh, since, uh, what, like 2016? Or I think we had one last year, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I love the variety of magnets that we got for this wave, guys. I mean, we got a good amount. Usually they all come with the same magnet, but probably the best variety for uh, for uh, the accessories and the trinkets that we got for this wave. So it's looking really good so far. We also got Bubba Wallace's number 43 NASCAR Racing Experience. Yet another Bubba Wallace car. I'm really impressed, man. We uh, Like I said, like I just talked about, um, I'm really loving all the Bubba cars that we're getting for this year. So David Land's going to love these cars, that's for certain, because... Dave Lance, a huge Bubba Wallace fan, so even though this car doesn't have any purple on it, <laughs> um, still is nice, and I do like the trinket that comes with this as well. Um, we also got another Jimmy Johnson car as well, guys. The the first one that we ever got since, uh, what, like, the first, uh, since, like, the second wave, I believe? So, this car actually looks nice. It's way better than the Los Repros car. We got the uh, Lowe's Patriotic car. Really nice looking car. It definitely um, reminds me of his Power of Pride car that he's driven the last few years, so... Uh, easily the best patriotic car that we got for this year. I mean for paint team wise really nice and the last two cars to be talking about it is actually both of them are exclusives um, We got the, the Casey Kane Dumont Gents all-star car that the original car um, There's actually two versions. There's the original and then there is the color the uh, liquid color uh, Exclusive so for the third time in a row for the third time in a row for NASCAR Authentics We got another liquid color car and what can I say? This car looks amazing as well. I mean, I do feel like this this car. It, it, I mean, I do love the liquid color cars. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like, but I, I don't know how I feel about it on this car because you know, I I love the throwback it has to this, but seeing it with the liquid color just really just throws it off. I mean, some of it makes it look like it pops, but I just love the original painting of this car because you guys know it's a it's a tribute to. Um, Casey Kane back in his Abraham days where he was doing really well. Um, so I had a feeling this car was going to be made, but now it's got me good hopes because this is now the third Casey K car that they got released for NASCAR Authentics. So it's looking good because you guys know Casey Kane's leaving uh, is now done with NASCAR. So um, at least he got a great set off with the diecast, but highly encourage you guys to get, the, to, to get uh, those exclusives. I mean, the uh, Brandt Agriculture, Justin Algar, the uh, Dumont Jets, All-Star. And if you guys are lucky enough to find the Liquid Color car, then that's good because I've had trouble lately finding the Brad Kozlowski Auto Trader Liquid Car, but I do have the Dale Jr. Liquid Color car. And feel free to comment below if you guys have found all three so far or whenever Wave 9 is going to hit. I'm assuming it's going to hit probably by the end of this month. Um, because, you know, Wave 8 is now officially in stores, but I'm still having trouble trying to find it. I've only found the throwbacks, but I got a What's in Stores video to be talking about that soon. But overall, guys, probably my favorite Wave for this, uh, for this set. Um, I probably recommend getting all these cars, man. I mean, usually there's one car I would miss out on, but I, I say all of them are nice, man. I'm probably going to review every single car in this Wave, but this is a really awesome Wave. My favorite wave so far for NASCAR Authentics. We got exclusives, we got the liquid color car, and we got NASCAR Classics, man. So, best wave so far. I think they're getting better and better, and like I just said, man, 
I'm loving that Lionel does these liquid color exclusives because, you know, it just gives more people to go out and do uh, wave hunting. So, um, even though you're going to have some jackass that's going to go and buy, yeah, going to go and just buy the liquid color card and sell it on eBay for like 40, 50 bucks. But, you know, we live in a nice screwed up world, but that's all that matters, guys. But uh, that's going to wrap up here on the NASCAR Diecast News. Thank you guys so much for watching this uh, very, very lengthy episode. I think this is going to be almost an hour long, but if you guys are true hardcore fans, then uh, if you guys watch all this video, then heck, you guys are awesome. But um, heck, guys, uh, hopefully we're going to have some more stuff to be talking about. I know the upload schedule has been very slow. A lot's been going on lately, but I'm um, going to catch things up. we got a lot of cool stuff to be talking about um, on the next um Dyke Guest News and many more NASCAR Thanks reviews. So stay tuned to this channel and feel free to subscribe, man. We are 50, we are less than 50 subs away to get to uh, 2,800. So keep on rolling, guys. But once again, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the NASCAR Dyke Guest News. And um, this has been Original Big Bright. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in another NASCAR Diecast News.